My name is John Dawson, and uh, I'm uh, I'm here again to uh, do an, another video on um, intaglio etching techniques. Uh, this uh, this video isn't, uh, I guess, technically speaking, about a actual uh, intaglio etching technique. This is about um, removing uh, false bites or other kinds of mistakes that you've made on the plate that you want to get rid of. Uh, in the course of doing uh, prints, it's almost inevitable at some point or other, you're going to have uh, either false bites or some area of the plate that um, you're not really happy with and uh, want to remove. And um, this, uh, this video is about uh, a couple of different ways of um, how to remove those things from your plate so they won't print. Well, to begin with, uh, what you're going to need to scrape uh, false bites or other little mistakes uh, out of your plate is, uh, oddly enough, a scraper. Uh, the scrapers come in a couple different sizes. Uh, as an undergraduate in uh, my first class on uh, intaglio printing, they advise uh, taping the shaft of the, spray, of the scraper in order to get uh, more control and more accuracy uh, using the scraper in order to scrape things out. And I think uh, that does actually work very well. Uh, you might try it, see if you like it. If you don't, you can always remove the tape. The next thing you're uh, going to need is um, uh, what I used to call emery paper. It's uh, now called extra fine waterproof sandpaper. And this is 400 grit. And 400 grit is uh, about the right grit uh, for what you're going to need to uh, to do, uh, do uh, uh, the uh, uh, polishing out of the plate. Um, it's best to cut them up into smaller pieces like this. And you're going to apply a little bit of 3-in-1 oil uh, when you do that. Um, the other thing that you probably would be very handy to have is a barkeeper's friend. You're going to apply this with a little bit of uh, water and um, you might need a sponge also when you do that. Uh, we'll demonstrate how to use this in a little bit. And in the end, it's nice to have a little bit of uh, dish soap to clean the plate off completely uh, when you're finished. Now, the other thing that is um, usually uh, used or has been in the past for doing this is a burnisher. I have never been able to do anything with this except make a mess. Uh, personally, if you have one, I'd put it back in the drawer and forget it. If you don't have one, I wouldn't buy one. I don't think it does anything. Um, I don't think it's useful for anything. What's much more useful is a, uh, a Dremel tool. Now, a basic Dremel tool costs about $50. So they're not particularly expensive. And you're going to need a couple of accessories to go with that. The two different accessories you'll need is a first, this is called a polishing wheel. It's actually a rubber wheel. And the product number on this is 425 or 425-02. Now the 02 means there's two in a package. And it's a little bit better uh, value for your money if you get the one that has two in the package. Um, the other thing that you will need are these um, felt uh, polishing wheels. Um, most of the uh, Dremel tool kits uh, come with a couple of these to start with. If you have a Dremel tool and you don't have these, the product number for this is uh, 429. And um, they're very uh, helpful, and you're going you're gonna to really probably need this to do what you want to do. They come in a couple different sizes. They come in this tiny little size, which is also real handy. Uh, it's called something a little different, and the product number on that is uh, 520-02. And uh, it also comes in this um, bullet shape or cone shaped. Um, I have not found this to be very useful, so uh, I would avoid buying the uh, the cone-shaped um, uh, polishing uh, wheel. It's not really a wheel. Um, so those are the um, basic things that you're going to need to uh, 
remove any uh, mistakes or um, false bites uh, from your plate and we'll get started in demonstrating how we do each one of these things uh, here in a second. Now this is a test plate that has a variety of different uh, etches on it and I'm going to remove uh, all the etched areas that's uh, outlined in red. Well, you need to hold the uh, scraper down toward the uh, the end, and and you need to apply a fair amount of pressure. At some point, it's um, real helpful to scrape back and forth using um, both uh, both sides of the scraper. Next, I'm uh, using the Dremel tool with the um, rubber uh, polishing wheel. Uh, the important thing on this really is not to press down too hard. You really want to go over it fairly lightly. Uh, if you press down too hard, you're going to create grooves in the, um, in the plate and you really don't want that to happen. So the objective here is to smooth out all those deep scratch marks that uh, were made by the scraper. And at some point it'll look, uh, begin to look kind of polished. Uh, next, I'm going to add some 3-in-1 oil and then using the, um, the sandpaper, uh, that 400 grit uh, sandpaper, I'm going to rub it down pretty good with the sandpaper. And then uh, after you've done that, I'm going to take the Dremel tool with the, uh, the smaller uh, buffing uh, felt tip tool and uh, go over it pretty well with the, uh, the Dremel tool. Uh, after you've done that, um, Pretty well. Then I'm um, going to take a little bit of paint thinner and uh, clean it all off. Now I usually do this uh, a second time, um, uh, adding the um, three-in-one oil, and then just with the Dremel tool uh, with a, a cleaner um, buffing uh, attachment, uh, run it over it again, and then of course. Uh, when you're done, you clean it off with uh, some paint thinner. Uh, next, with the uh, Dremel tool again, and this time without the 3-in-1 uh, oil, uh, use the larger uh, felt uh, polishing uh, wheel and, uh, and go over it pretty well for uh, quite a few times until it, uh, it starts to look uh, kind of shiny. Now I add some water and then uh, the uh, barkeeper's friend. Um, then we're going to use the Dremel tool again uh, with the um, larger uh, felt buffing tool. Uh, the barkeeper's friend spews out all over the place when you do this, so I use a uh, stiff paper or a piece of cardboard to kind of uh, put in front of it to keep it from spewing all over uh, all over the place. At some point, you're going to start to see some kind of black, grimy stuff start to come up. And, um, you know, you go over this two or three times with uh, the Dremel tool and the barkeeper's friend and get it kind of polished up. Uh, then uh, wipe off the plate with a, kind of a damp paper towel and rub it down a little bit. Then we're going to add a little bit more water and uh, some uh, liquid dish soap. And then uh, I'm going to scrub the plate down with that a little bit and then eventually uh, wash that off. And now, uh, now you're ready to, uh, to proof the plate and see what you've got. Uh, this is a proof of the plate after the etching has been removed. And here is a uh, before and after shot of the two plates. Now, if, um, if I was doing this uh, for something other than uh, a demonstration, uh, I would probably go back and um, reapply the 3-in-1 uh, uh, oil and the uh, sandpaper to this one more time and buff it out at least one more time. You can't really see it so much on this example, but um, it's, uh, it has a lot of little gray areas that I would normally like to get rid of. Well, I thought it might be helpful to, uh, to show how this uh, 
works in um, removing um, uh, unwanted uh, afterbites from an actual print situation. Um, I had uh, started a plate and applied a, uh, a soft ground with big and I hadn't, hadn't used big for a soft ground very often. And I got the, um, the soft ground on way too thin. And um, this is the result. I wound up with uh, after bites over almost the entire upper half of the plate. And uh, it might have been actually easier to start over completely, but I, I decided to... Uh, to try and remove all the uh, the false bites, uh, it took me about two or three days to do that. Well, this is how it looked after I finished removing um, uh, all the unwanted uh, afterbites, and then uh, I went on to complete the print. And uh, this is the um, the print after it was completed and uh, started a um, an addition. Now another way um, to remove unwanted uh, uh, etched areas on, the, on your plate is to uh, get some uh, what's called whiting. Uh, you can uh, get this from just about any one of the uh, companies that sell uh, intaglio printing um, uh, supplies. Uh, this one comes from Graphic Chemical. You can get it, I believe, also from Renaissance or Tekich. Um, you want to probably put some of it in a small can like this. It looks like talcum powder, actually. And to, uh, to apply it, which we'll uh, demonstrate in a few minutes, you're going to need a little piece of paper towel. Uh, this is used after the plate has already been um, inked and ready to print. So uh, we'll show how that's, uh, that's done here in a minute. This is a plate that I'd finished, but as you can see in the corner there is a, a, a very ugly uh, a false bite. Here's a detail of the uh, false bite, and uh, I'm going to show you how I removed that. So, first of all, uh, you take a little bit of the um, uh, whiting and uh, you put it on a, a little piece of paper towel and uh, and basically, you just uh, you just wipe it out. It's not very hard. It's pretty simple. Okay, as you uh, could see from the demo, uh, using the whiting to remove things from your plate is uh, fairly simple. Uh, the disadvantage of it, of course, is you have to do it every single time you print the plate if you're doing a, an addition uh, before you uh, actually put the plate on the press and. Um, and print, you're going to have to use the whiting to remove the uh, whatever spot it is that you, uh, that you want to remove. Now, one advantage to this is um, if you have a very small area in the um, plate and you don't want to scrape out something you've already done, but you have this little area you want to get rid of, you can use this and uh, take the uh, area that you want to remove out with either a Q-tip or a, a smudging stick. And um, that, that works actually pretty well for little areas uh, in the plate that um, you want to remove uh, without actually destroying other areas that you uh, are happy with. Well, one final thing uh, that can be helpful, uh, once you've uh, finished removing uh, whatever it is you want to remove from the plate. And before you print again, sometimes it's helpful to totally clean the plate. Uh, one thing you can use is Brasso. Uh, you just squirt the Brasso on, you rub it down with a paper towel that does a good job of removing uh, old ink or grime from the plate. Um, it has a bad ammonia smell, which I don't like, but it still does a very good job. And it uh, washes off with, uh, with water, which is a, a big advantage for some people. The other thing that I've used is uh, putz cleaner. Uh, this is actually, f I guess, for rollers or something. But it works real well uh, for cleaning your plate also. 
you uh, you need uh, to have like an old rag or something you rub uh, the putz uh, cleaner it's kind of like a paste onto the plate you keep uh, rubbing it down it'll turn black actually and um, it cleans off with um, with paint thinner so those are two uh, things that you could do uh, in in the end uh, after you've uh, removed uh, whatever it is that you want to remove uh, from your plate to uh, get the plate really clean before you print again. Well, <laughs> um, this, uh, as usual, pretty much uh, concludes um, this uh, video on uh, how to remove false bites or other little mistakes that you have uh, made on your, uh, your etching plate. Um, and uh, as usual, I'm going to follow this up with uh, some examples of my own uh, intaglio etchings and the uh, web address for my Facebook page and my website. And you can also uh, subscribe to the other uh, videos in this series on uh, intaglio etching techniques uh, and other videos that I've done on YouTube.